Hi guys, this is Joe here from Rufio. Today we are bringing you my December update to my Invoked Ligma deck profile. This is one that I've been playing with for a few months now. Really, really enjoy the deck. Been seeing some really, really cool results. And I wanted to see how I can adapt it for this new meta that is coming with the changes in December. Of course, most of these changes actually are probably a little bit more affected by what's been released rather than what's been hit on the list. But nonetheless, it has affected how we're going to play going forward. If this is not your first time on the channel, welcome aboard. You should definitely hit subscribe before you go any further so you don't forget to do so later on down the line. If this is not your first time on the channel, well, you already know what kind of fucking garbage we cook up here. So I guess you came back for more, you little fucking rodent, you. Quickly, before we get stuck into the video, I do just want to say a huge shout out to the channel sponsors over at Jam Jam Cards UK. You should check them out if you want to get some nice singles. You can get yourself a cheeky discount on their eBay store by using the link in the description. But again, that's enough waffling on from me. Let's get stuck right in to the deck profile. Okay, so welcome to the updated profile. Apologies if you can hear a loud noise in the background. Hopefully it won't get picked up on the microphone, but there's a good possibility that it does. It's my laptop. It sounds like a fucking jet engine taking off. Now that we've cleared that up, let's get stuck in to the deck profile. As a quick note before we go, of course, this isn't a physical deck profile. The reason being is, of course, this whole silly fucking thing is going on with this absolutely crazy cold out there. Let's just call it that so YouTube doesn't strike me down. Um, and yeah, it's when they're getting the physical cards is a little bit harder. Going to see the guys who do the sponsorship of the channel does make it a little bit harder to do so and therefore get the physical cards in that we need to do profiles. A little bit more difficult, so we're going with a virtual one here just so that you can go ahead and see how we're getting on. So doing a quick rundown of the deck profile, it is worth a note that again, some of these cards that we've got here are theoretical. They're not necessarily cards that you would include in these quantities. That's much less in the main deck, more about the side and the extra deck. We'll get into those in a moment. The main deck though is pretty much exactly what I would recommend playing. So we start off with triple copies of Alistair. I mean, this is again, pretty mandatory in an invoke deck. There's no reason not to play triple copies of Alistair. He's definitely your best normal summon in the deck. Uh, so you absolutely want to see him in your opening hand or a way to get to him as quickly as possible. He is the biggest hand trap magnet in the fucking game. I swear to you, he is going to get hand trapped by absolutely everything. So you have to be ready to protect him. You have to be ready to still make those plays go through him. Again, we'll get to those shortly as we go on through the profile. Pretty standard though, three copies of Alistair. We then move on to our Ligma package, so we are including Dragma. Last time we had Ashian in, uh, I was tempted to pair these two up and play Dingirsu in the extra, or Sanafond or something like that. Uh, I decided not to do that, I dropped Ashian, it was cool for pushing for a little bit of extra damage, but you really don't actually need that in this deck. It controls really well, but it does have plenty of punching power, and I don't think that it's needed enough to warrant including him. So I've gone ahead and swapped him out for Maximus just on his own. Just the one copy, because I think that's all that you need. It's nice being able to have extra search targets, so you can keep resolving these really, really good spells, uh, and the really good package in general. Um, not many people are playing cards that deal with him in their extra deck, so again, it's really cool to have him in there and it means that you absolutely just obliterate your opponent's combo pieces in one go it's a really really good card sometimes you can get it on the board and protect it you can resolve his effect multiple times uh, and that can really really fuck your opponent over very quickly we then move on to our two copies of Fleur de Lis. I think the two copies, again, is just fine. It's one of those things that, again, I'd mentioned I'd always wanted to be able to continue to resolve those cards. So consider playing more copies just so I can keep searching. Um, but having multiples of this, you don't... It's not really a card that you want to see in your hand. It's a card that you want to search more often than not. So having two copies is plenty enough. Definitely don't go for a third. It will just become too bricky. And I don't think that one is anywhere near enough. And then we have three copies of Ecclesia. Again, pretty standard for this. I know some people are playing even smaller packages depending on the deck. I think for this deck, you want to maximize on these and keep resolving those effects. Getting those searches off and setting up that kind of basic starting combo that we like to go through. And then next up, we're looking at hand traps. So again, these are, I think, more or less self-explanatory. We've got triple copies of Ash Blossom and Joy of Spring. Still the best hand trap in the game in terms of diversity in, in formats. So again, playing three is absolutely necessary. We're still playing Gamma and Driver. Despite the fact that Driver being an absolute brick, Gamma is so incredibly strong. Again, this format, something that I absolutely believe you need to play. It's also another good card that, again, can help protect yourself. It can stop your opponent during their turn. It is usually going to be the first thing that you side out when you go into side decking but it is something that again i believe you need to have main deck that you can always just swap out later if you don't need it 
Now, beforehand, we were playing copies of Effect Veiler. I've decided to cut those. They are something you could potentially play in the side deck. Uh, I believe the Ghost Bell is much stronger at the moment. We've got to keep in mind, Virtual World is the deck to beat. Now, this is where this kind of flexibility comes in that you're not always going to be playing against Virtual World. Maybe you're just playing at Locals, if at all, at the moment. Um, and if you're playing at your Locals and nobody plays Virtual World, then, of course, you play less cards to deal with it. But this is just to give you some idea of how you might play if you were going to play... Uh, let's say some competitive tournaments, potentially online, some remote duels, something like that. These are the kind of cards that you would want to consider doing that with. And then we move on. We have two copies of Nibiru. We're still sticking to that at the moment. I still think the two is very, very good. Um, it's one of those cards that if you see it in your hand, it's great. If not, you're going to see something else that's just as important. There is some argument, of course, for going up to three again, more consistency in seeing it. We play so many other hand traps that it really isn't the end of the world. But it is a good card. It isn't good versus every deck, but it is good against the best decks. Let's just say that. And then we move on, we are on to Magical Meltdown, again this is pretty self-explanatory, it searches Alice that it helps protect your fusion plays, what's not to love about this card, I'm highly surprised that this didn't get hit in any kind of capacity on the list, although they may be holding out for when Magistus comes out in case people want to sort of meld the two together and see how that goes. And then beyond that we have triple copies of Invocation, that rounds off our main deck package for the Invocation kind of stuff. Uh, I think three is much more important now than it was before. Again, I mentioned this towards the end of last format. Alistair being such a hand trap target means that your play gets stopped. And if it gets stopped dead there, it can be really, really difficult to continue to play. Having three copies of Invocation means that even if your opponent stops the search, you can then go about your plays. In fact, often, if you've got the one in hand and you know your opponent's likely to stop it, you can bait an important hand trap that they then can't use later down the line. Something like an Ash Blossom. It takes a resource out of their hand and then you continue about your plays as normal. It makes it a little bit easier just to keep recycling these cards and going round. And if you have, happen to see multiples, then that's just it. It's not the end of the world. You'll be able to play still. Triple copies of Nadir Servant. That's pretty much mandatory, I believe, in this deck. It's just absolutely bonkers. In fact, it's one of the main reasons that you'd even play this engine in the first place. Being able to dump those cards from the extra deck into the grave is absolutely insane, as we all already know. And, of course, the fact that it's effectively a rotor for the deck is just... What's, what's not to love about this card? It's fucking strong and probably the first thing that they're going to hit out of the engine when the time comes. And then we move on to Forbidden Droplet. I'm still playing three copies of this. Sometimes I'll side a copy of this out. But I think it's also really, really strong, this format, again, uh, against the uh, Virtual World decks and against some of the other top meta contenders. This is really, really strong. Um, you can even do little intricate plays. I've like been able to send your Driver and Gamma to the graveyard so that they don't get banished during end phases and still being able to resolve those uh, whilst stopping your opponent's plays and that kind of thing. So there's lots of little niche interactions there that can come up as well, on top of the fact that it's just a bonkers card in general. I think highly underappreciated at times as well, and one that I absolutely think a three of is mandatory. You can always side out if you don't need the extra copies. Moving on, we've got the inclusion of Call by the Grave. At one point I cut this because I didn't feel like playing one was absolutely necessary. However, again, hand traps are back in full force. Also, the fact that it interrupts a lot of the really top decks. Uh, if you do happen to see this in your opening hand or even early on in the game, this could actually be such a killer card to see that I think playing the one copy is really just worth it. It's a power spell, the likes of Foolish Burial, the likes of Monster Reborn. A lot of the time you're going to play them just because of how strong they are. Call by the Grave really does fall into that category for me. We have a single copy of Terraform, and again, pretty self-explanatory. You're playing a deck that plays field spells, you need to play Terraforming. And speaking of field spells, we move on, we have Mystic Mine. I'm still playing the one copy main deck. Um, again, free wins game one is just absolutely insane. Who doesn't want them? Anyone who doesn't like it can, you know, go fuck yourself. I don't really care. Mystic Mine is a card that you should be maining if you've got the space to do so. And if you can, forget about morals. It's all about winning those games. And then we move on to our trap lineup. We have triple copies of Infinite Impermanence and a single copy of Punishment. Punishment is incredibly strong. Um... It can win games on its own, but it does have that drawback. It can be a little bit slow to set up, but it's a really, really good part of that first turn board. You don't really want to see it in your hand. You want to be able to search for it. Uh, otherwise, it's yeah, it's just a bit shit. Um, so being able to search for it is really important, and that's why having one copy is good, because it's just there out the way. More likely that you're going to search it and see it in your opening hand. If you do see it in your opening hand, though, it's not the end of the world. And we have triple copies, again, of Infinite Impermanence. It doubles up as a hand trap. You can set it, switch off back row, all that good stuff. Infinite Impermanence, still incredibly strong in the game today and will be so for the foreseeable future. 
And then we're going to run through the extra deck, maybe with a little bit more speed than we've done the main deck. Uh, Mechaba, pretty self-explanatory. One of your most important cards to set up on turn one. Uh, gives you negate. It's a big body. It does all the good stuff. Uh, we have one copy of Purga Trio. Again, just a massive beat stick. You can clear out your opponent's side of the field if they're not ready for it. If your opponent commits too much to the board, you're just going to go ahead and punish them. It's a great card. We have one copy of Orgoades. I think one of the most underrated extra deck monsters that Invoked have at their disposal. Honestly, I think it's up there with the other two that we see here. Uh, being able to pop cards during your opponent's turn. Nobody ever reads it, so commit to plays that then get punished for. Uh, the fact that he pops cards, the fact that he gets big, he does all the good stuff that you could possibly want. I think it's a really, really important one of in the deck. In fact, if I had the space, I would possibly consider even playing a second. We have one copy of Titanoclad, aka Bastard the Ashen Dragon. Uh, this is just a searcher for the extra deck, of course. This is what you're going to play first turn uh, if you don't want to have to pop things with Entis and things like that. This can be a really good way of setting up your cards for next turn. Again, just a one-off is more than fine for me. You could potentially play a second if you really want to think about the grind game long term. Two copies of Entis because popping cards is free as fuck. Uh, it turns fucking the dear servant into something something else. It just becomes absolutely insane. Uh, and again, really, really important card for that reason. Of course, if you play the mirror match, it gives you a way to play back a little bit. We are still playing the Super Poly package. I think it's really, really strong still. Not quite as strong against Virtual World as other decks. Uh, there's some better options to consider, which we'll get into in a moment. But this does also deal with those kind of spooky rogue decks that aren't necessarily prepared for a Super Poly, but are prepared for you. This will help you deal with those kind of decks too. And it does beat a lot of the other top decks in the game. Then we move on to Almirage. This is for those plays along with Secure Gardener. We've also got Predaplan Vert Anaconda. This link package is basically to go through your Alistair plays or to see your Super Polys. Uh, you could consider Predaplan Vert Anaconda with other fusion spells as well. But I think really the main thing for this is that it's good there for Super Poly. Uh, just being able to send it from the deck to just deal with things on the field. And then we move on, we've got Side Frame Lord Omega, because you can make it, because why not? If you dump it into the grave, it gives you a bit of grave control, which is always quite nice. And then our last two cards in the extra deck, these are basically here as Cherry's targets. And this is what I wanted to talk about, these kind of flex spots. We've got these two here, basically are their just anti-virtual world cards. Uh, I think that the rest of our extra deck and our main deck deals with most of the other meta contenders, so we're not too worried about that. But Virtual World, if they set up, you can be in a real problematic situation. Again, this is a flex spot, so if you decided you didn't want to play Cherry's targets, there are other options out there you can still play that old Chanel package with Schism uh, I personally don't like to play it in the main deck but some people do and if you would like to then that's an option you could consider but again these two are flex spots but they are here primarily with virtual world in mind and then moving on to the side deck as discussed we're talking about cherries here i think it's one of those cards that it may not be quite as good as it is in theory being able to deal with the virtual world extra deck during their turn though it does seem quite nice to me again it might not pan out like that in testing and in reality but again a card that's just there to deal with one of the top meta contenders you could also consider Lancia because, again, it deals with the same deck. It also deals with a lot of the fringe decks as well. Stuff like Dinosaurs, that kind of thing. This is really strong against those as well. But again, something that's a bit of a flex spot and you can play other hand traps in its place. We've got Xyz Encore. This is, I guess, kind of a, a super poly alternative that you could try. Uh, it's a really good way of dealing with VFD. Again, just a really, really strong card to potentially consider side decking in this format. And as discussed earlier, Super Poly, pretty self-explanatory. What it does, it just wraps up the opponent's field. It can be really good going first as well, something to set as an interrupt, and can win you games off the bat. And then lastly, we have Lightning Storm. This is just to deal with back row. Again, these are all just options. These are not necessarily the ratios or the actual full side deck that I would play, because I think really you want to treat them to whatever tournament you're involved with, whether it's locals, whether it's remote doors, whether it's playing against friends. Uh, you're going to want to build this according to whatever you're playing against, but it's kind of just to give you a broad idea. And that is all for today's deck profile. By virtue of the fact that you made it this far, hopefully it means that you've enjoyed this absolute fucking trash enough to have hit subscribe already. But if you haven't, you should definitely do so so you don't miss out on this kind of rubbish in future. If there's particular content that you want to see, drop it down in the comments. Find me on social media. I am easy enough to find out there. Trust me. And let me know exactly what you'd like to see. If you've enjoyed the video, definitely let me know. If you fucking hated it, definitely let me know. Either way, it would be great to hear from you and see what you thought of the content. But again, that's enough shit talking from me. Thank you very much for coming along, guys. Hopefully you have enjoyed the video, and I will see you in the next one. This content is brought to you in association with my buddies over at Jam Jam Cards UK. You can find the links to the eBay store and the Facebook page in the description.